So the platform is yours. You can share. So please thank stick around to the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your kind introduction, Madam. Okay. Uh, now I just uh, move on to my presentation. I have just structured my presentation in uh, three ways. Uh, the first part is just I would like to just give a very brief introduction and a glimpse of uh, uh, the sericulture because you know the mulberry becomes the uh, basic forage for silkworm bombyx mori. Now most of uh, the participants, uh, uh, for their benefit, uh, what I try to do is just to give a glimpse of it. And my topic is uh, chemical mutation breeding techniques for crop improvement. Overall, the general crop improvement techniques is, is uh, as good as for this mulberry also. But before going to that, uh, uh, the participants need to know uh, what mulberry and how is it linked with the sericulture. So this is a very brief uh, and quick, uh, uh, what you call a screen share or a slides for the benefit of the participants. Now sericulture, you know, I would put it uh, like a sustainable interactive interdependent interdisciplinary activities which has got a high employment potential and rich potential dividend uh, enterprise and it is suited for unskilled labor economy of this country now because uh, only in the world uh, china and india we are the two key players as far as silk is, silk production is concerned now i would not go much into details we have got four types of silks one is the mulberry silk that's where you see mulberry raw silk, which mainly make use of mulberry plants. That becomes the basic, uh, what they call um, the forage for rearing silkworm. The next, I'll just go to this slide, uh, which gives an overall view of uh, sericulture states in, uh, you know, in the country. Wherever this green, you know, uh, markings you can see, these are the states which produce mulberry silk. And the next slide, this is very interesting. All of you are aware of this, or most of you are, um, are Indians, or anybody for that matter, they're fascinated by this silk. And the silk is the outcome of the sericulture. And it has got an economic and commercial you know, value. Now, we call the silk uh, you know, yarn or the fiber as a queen of textiles because of its various properties, you see. This is the only uh, filament which uh, uh, you see is present as a single filament produced by an biological an organism, that's an insect, uh, you know, Bombyx mori, which continuously spins thousand, you know, starting from 450 meters to 1,500 meters. And uh, di this depends upon the breeds. So there, therefore, we have a lot of breeds and races of silkworm, uh, you know, like you have Asian races, the Chinese races, the Indian races, Baghdad races. Okay, now uh, we have our own ancient history of this sericulture, uh, which I will not go much into detail. However, this whole of silk you see is made up of two components. One is uh, the two kinds of protein that is called as this is the sericin and the another is fibroin. Now, what we are more interested in increasing this yield of silk protein in order to, you know, harness more silk per unit kg of mulberry leaf. So that's why you see the 70% of uh, the mulberry leaf protein is converted into silk protein. Therefore, here the mulberry becomes something, you know, very, very important and the, you know, central dogma of sericulture. Now, moving on to the next slide. Yeah, this is just to uh, impress upon the audience. Look at this. This is the, um, the biggest uh, cocoon market. In, in the country and it is also named as the silk town of uh, you know asia this is a ramnagar uh, district of uh, you know um, uh, one of the district of karnataka which is near, very near to bangalore capital bangalore now this is the uh, you know the silk cocoon which is being produced and uh, of course uh, some of our students which worked with me are also there and uh, i'll show you the how the silk is being produced so the yarn and it is uh, scooped and it is reeled and this is uh, these are all the operations and this is reeling and this is the now the raw silk and some of the byproducts the silk has got so much of uh, you see applications uh, not just as using it as a fabric it can be used in a various you uh, know field uh, you know of late because of its strength when it is used in strategic uh, purposes you know it has got a very good uh, tensile strength it can even replace the iron strings it is believed that uh, nearly it, is, it possesses the one-fourth strength of an iron 
okay, the yarn, perhaps being this and basically a natural fiber, possessing this much of strength, because iron is a, a very strong film, you know, strong uh, metal, but this is not a metal, but this is a protein. If this were to have some of the metallic properties, perhaps it would even excel this. And this is being used in making a lot of, uh, you know, parachutes and in different purposes where they use it for ropes because it has several, uh, you know, physical, uh, chemical and biological properties which is so friendly, eco-friendly. It's non-allergic. It's non-toxic. Therefore, the silk finds an applications in a lot of fields, even in, uh, you know, in medical fields. Now, the, the for... Uh, uh, surgical purposes, you know, the sutures are being replaced by the silk because silk sutures, it is very healthy and it's a protein. It's non-toxic, non-allergic and obviously it just gets absorbed with the, uh, any kind of protein. Now, these are the four types of silk and only India produces these four types of silk. I'm just moving on to this uh, next uh, slide. These uh, are, one is the Tassar, Eri and Moga. Quickly, I'll just go to this. This is another, these are all wild silk. You know, this cannot be reared inside, unlike our mulberry. This is a tassar silk. And this is, again, airy silkworm. Of course, now airy is being taken up as an indoor rearing. It has been, um, you see, produced by Phyllosoma is a uh, silkworm. It's a non-mulberry silkworm. And then you have Muga. This is, again, uh, uh, you know, produced by again a wild silkworms, which is uh, uh, you know exclusively confined to this northeastern states, and Assam is the only state, uh, perhaps, uh, and it is the only place in the world which produces this kind of silk. Therefore, it is unique, and it's when it's uh, you know production is very low, and the uh, you know there is a lot of demand for this. And this particular muga, once when it is finished, can you just see this uh, you know two uh, you know pictures below in this uh, uh, slide? So just resembles like a gold, just like a gold. So this, therefore in Assam, it is called as Majang Kori. Now the next slide I move on to, uh, yeah, I, I will straight away come to the point now. Uh, we forget about the non-mulberry silk and concentrate on mulberry silk. Now mulberry silk is being produced by silk from Bombyx Mori by biosynthesis. Now, what it makes it make use of it is the mulberry protein, mainly the protein that's present in mulberry protein. And as far as the economics is concerned, 60 percent of the total expenditure of silk cocoon production goes towards the mulberry leaf production, and 70 percent of the mulberry leaf protein is biosynthesized into silk by this Pombix mori. So, therefore, now it's a conversion of mulberry protein into silk protein. Now, all what matters is to focus upon to uh, enrich the nutritive value of leaf. So the nutritive value of a leaf of mulberry is enriched. If there is an improvement in its quality parameters, obviously it impacts on the quality of uh, the productivity of the silk per unit area. So therefore it is uh, you know uh, equated like this. That's the uh, per uh, unit area production of mulberry leaf and the yield of the silk. So these two things are being related. Now, therefore, I call this mulberry becomes the central dogma of sericulture. Now, I move on to this. How to improvise this? Now, the improvisation of any crop goes by breeding tools, making use of breeding tools. Now, we have seen this plant breeding dates back to almost uh, uh, 10 to 11,000 years old. The breeding, the very the concept of breeding. The first breeder we say the farmer or the first breeder on this earth. Ever since the civilization took place, most of the civilization started on the um, banks of the river. Maybe Egyptian civilization or Asian civilizations. Uh, in, uh, you know, uh, Harappan civilization, Mahanjadaro civilization. Now, all these civilizations, we see it all started in the bank of the river because the agriculture, the first thing agriculture started. The first agriculturist becomes the first breeder. So, uh, if you take uh, the, in a very simpler way, the the definition of breeding is that to bring in an improvisation in its yield parameters and its quality parameters. Now, this is in order to increase the uh, the productivity per unit area and to keep in uh, pace with the increased demand for uh, the uh, what you call the uh, material. It may be crop. It may be cotton, it may be a cloth, it may be a fiber, it may be oil, it may be an wood. 
No, everything comes from the nature. Now, the basis for this breeding is or biodiversity, uh, biodiversity. Because in you know this very biodiverse vegetation consists of all kind of you know uh, high yielding, low yielding, or it is disease resistant and pest resistant. So many characters we we, we call it as a, a genetic pool of a particular uh, uh, you know species of a plant or animal. Therefore, the biodiversity becomes the basis for us to get all these kind of uh, you know characters. That's what in breeding we try to. Uh, take them from the biodiversity and try to cross them and bring in an improved variety or a re, I mean, or a variety or a what you call crosses. Now that's what we do in breeding. Now, uh, in general uh, uh, breeding, I would just go into this. What what are the tools that we use for breeding? The methodology. Okay, there are a lot of methodology. If we uh, look into this breeding, you see how it has benefited our mankind. If we go back to 60s and 70s. Even earlier, back to 50s, so we had a lot of food problem. You see, the world faced a severe scarcity for food, and then the dictum came: that's green revolution. Through green revolution, we were able to produce large quantity of food. And uh, one of the pioneer and who led us uh, this green revolution in India was Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. He is a is uh, a uh, rice breeder and is an agricultural scientist. And he was the one who contributed to today's uh, so much of uh, food production and achieving the food sufficiency. If at all today we have achieved food sufficiency in our country, it all goes to the the contribution of Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. So he, he just showed he did plenty of breeding work in rice. Likewise, he is so much known in rice growing regions like China, like Japan, like all Asian countries. So M. S. Swaminathan. It was the one who just led this green revolution. Through that, we came to this, uh, or what you call achieving this food sufficiency. How all this happened? One is the the basic tenant of this green revolution was to bring in an high yielding varieties. Second thing is to give more, uh, you know, agricultural inputs like using more and more of chemical fertilizer. The third thing is the maximum utilization of uh, the water irrigation. These three things put together, blended, and that becomes the basic tenet of green revolution. And we achieved a lot. Today we have plenty of food. So all these varieties today, what we have, it may be rice, it may be wheat, it may be jowar, it may be ragi, millets, flowers, and fruits, vegetables, and then oil yielding, uh, uh, you know, seeds, and then fiber yielding trees. Today we have achieved that stage that. A lot of improvements have been made, and more high yielding varieties. Therefore, we call that high yielding varieties. Now, through breeding, we focus on evolving and high yielding varieties. That's how we link this breeding. So this, uh, you know, caters the demand of uh, you know increasing population as far as food production is concerned. The the uh, basic uh, concept is that. So therefore, uh, now. Uh, uh, because I worked on this mulberry later on, I would just to give some of the results of this mulberry. But before that, um, a few glimpses of mulberry mutation breeding, uh, which we use this mutation breeding. Uh, in the next slides, I'll be just going to show you um, the breeding tools. You uh, know, because I started mulberry, I just just give you a glimpse and then again more to that breeding tools. Now in mulberry, because mulberry was important for sericulture. Therefore, we need to give uh, produce more and more of varieties. And Chinese, I told you, they are the leading uh, country in the world in sericulture, uh, next to India. Now, only India and China are the two key players. Uh, they have nearly about thousand and more varieties of mulberry, which suits to a specific region, specific season, and specific province. Okay, and uh, ecoclimatic or agroclimatic conditions. That means that's the you see advanced. Uh, you know, breeding uh, tools they have used and they have come out with so much of uh, varieties of mulberry. And uh, likewise, that is needed here also. And we even we, in India, we are not lagging behind. We also have a lot of popular varieties of mulberry from past, okay, uh, 70s, 80s, and till now, uh, I would say around 30, 40 years, even in, in our country, uh, the sericulture, we have made an enormous uh, progress. Now, that is through this breeding. Now, especially in mulberry, uh, the mulberry breeding is being done by two ways by using mutation breeding that is one is uh, chemical uh, 
uh, mutation, and another is physical mutation. Now that's all. These are all the slides. You can just quickly. I can share these slides with you later on. Now I just move on to this. Uh, yeah. Now uh, studies aimed understanding the process of mutation in crop improvement. Why we, we would go for this? Why we use this mutation tools for? Uh, and what is the aim of using this mutation uh, tools for improvement, crop improvement? One is you can just decide, go for testing and efficacy of various mutagens used. And then another thing is identifying the optimum doses and best method of treatments, then isolation of mutants, because this is a wonderful tool. Mutations gives you an array of mutants, a very, very, very broad spectrum of variants. Only this is possible, only through mutation it is possible, not in any other kind of what you call uh, breeding technique. Because it just bombards, it just uh, disturbs uh, the DNA sequences at molecular level, and then again it repairs and it survives. Now we are trying to see that uh, which uh, survives after the repairment of the DNA sequences, that becomes a beneficial mutant, which would be giving you a better yield. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to just you know, uh, gamble with this. And definitely we will get plenty of beneficial mutants. Now, that's why we use this mutation. And the most uh, popular... Sir, sorry to you, sir. Yes, yes. Can't see the... Yes, ma'am. Sir, uh, please uh, be, be timely, sir. Yeah, yeah, I'll just go on to the quick slides. Okay, therefore, I we, I move on to straight away now this plant breeding. Now you can see this plate uh, in this particular slide. We have conventional, modern, and then you have selections and the selections and artificial selections. Now these are all, this becomes conventional because we do not have any kind of, you know, control over what's happening in there uh, at the, you know, at the chromosomal level or a combination of genes level. But here in the modern tools, you know, we are going to play with the tools of these genes. This is what mutation breeding, polyploid breeding and biotechnological approaches. Okay, uh, the, the next slide is that I straight away go. The mutation breeding tools, you see, we, the tools are these mutagens. And these uh, mutagens, one are the physical mutagens, another is the chemical mutagens. And very popular and potential chemical mutagens is the ethyl methane sulfonate and methane methane sulfonate. These are the things which have been extensively used in our horticultural crops. Uh, and then uh, whatever today we have produced, we have plenty of, uh, you know, um, the products which has been produced by mutation breeding in horticulture, in agriculture, in sericulture, and even in dairy farming and even in uh, animal husbandry and so forth. Now, this is the scheme which uh, which need to be uh, understood whenever you are going for a breeding. The first thing is you'll have to procure the stocks. Uh, that stock means to say that the, the parent material to which, in which you are going to uh, conduct this mutation breeding. And then you'll have to establish, I'm talking about the plant here, uh, therefore, we establish a germplasm bank and then we go for selection of the uh, material uh, in which variety or in which uh, species or whatever, you know, uh, you know, mutation has to be brought in. Then we go for induction of mutations. Then we go for screening, isolate them and then uh, or trans, uh, transplant it into the field in the larger uh, level. These clones which are mutated on evaluation basis and that becomes uh, first generation variants mutants and second generation, third, fourth, fifth. This is being done in order to carry out the evaluation to see the, whether the characters have been fixed because they should not be in segregation. By this continuous evaluation, repeated evaluations, what we do, uh, one is the quantitative evaluations and the qualitative evaluations. And then after all those things where we achieve a consistency, then we go to what is known as multi-locational field trials at the farmer's level. Okay, once when uh, that means to say the uh, the breed or uh, you know a variety has been evolved and that we put it to the multi-locational trials and then uh, it is a successful beneficial uh, variety. So th that's all I just like to uh, conclude and with a quick uh, uh, what you call uh, showing the some of the results which you have got obtained from various concentrations of mutants which I tried in Mulberry. Now that's how we go. There is an increase. We get a lot of variants like dwarfs tall, albinos, and then uh, uh, crinkling of leaves, more eye yielding leaves. And what is required here in mutation is that, you see, you whenever you get a very wide or a broad spectrum of mutant, the continuous you know, screening and evaluation it takes a long time and it uh, may take three, four or five years because the characters has to be fixed. This is what the eye yielding, what we have tried and we have got by a particular concentration. 
So the concentration of the emissions need to be standardized. You can just see in the third picture here. Look at the yield. Okay, per plant. This is the control. And look at this is the increased in at 0.3% mutation induction. We were able to get this particular I yield. And this particular I yield, what we do is we multiply and then put it to the field. This is what we put it to the field and uh, again propagate it and again evaluate it and again just uh, um, give it to the farmers. Uh, these are all some of the variants. Along with this, your beneficial characters, you also get such kind of all kind of abnormalities. This is something of uh, you know, research and academic interest. Now, uh, this is the plot abnormalities which we see. That means whenever we use mutations, we do come across a lot of deleterious uh, abnormalities. And these are the fields, you know, multi-locational trials I was telling you, putting at different village uh, locations, okay, and collaborating with the farmers. And then uh, we get that uh, yield and evaluate this particular with a bioassay. Bioassay is again, we take, bring these leaves and rear the silkworms and find out what is the yield, uh, increase in the yield of the silk. And then all other parameters we, we, uh, which we do carry out in laboratories and then declare it as an, uh, a beneficial product. So, okay, I think I've just uh, rushed in. Uh, with a small uh, time, I was not able to just give full details. That just I wanted to tell how these mutations uh, can be used. Okay, and mutagens can be used to bring in an uh, improvement in the crop. So uh, I thank uh, the organizers, that case are Rangaswamy College of Technology. And then I thank uh, Dr. Maithili, Madam, Dr. Gayatri, Madam, and Dr. Priyadarshini, Madam, who have uh, taken a lot of uh, SCP pains every day in organizing meticulously this uh, webinar. I thank you very much. If any uh, questions, I can just answer. Hello? Can you hear me, madam? Hello? Can you hear me? Sir, your presentation was really nice. Thank you very much. Due to a shortage of time, I think we yeah, cannot... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. I was into Russian, yes. yes. And, uh, yeah. Meet in some other forum, sir. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Me. Yes, tell me, madam. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Maitri again. Uh, we can end up this session, sir. No problem. Thank you. We can have questions later on, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Now I would like to call upon the next participant, Dr. Shivani Dobal. Sir, you can uh, please click the stop sharing option, sir. Anil Kumar, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Shivani Dobal, ma'am. Dr. Shivani yes, Dobal. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Yes, ma'am. You can share your uh, PPT. On the way, I'll uh, introduce you to the platform. I'm, I'm so, sharing my screen. Just Yes, yes. So, our next participant is Dr. Shivani Dobal, Assistant Professor from the Department of Tree Improvement, Plant Breeding and Genetics, College of Horticulture and Forestry, Central Agriculture University, Arunachal Pradesh. And today she is here to present her topic on research progress in tree improvement. Ma'am, please uh, kindly stick on to the time. Uh, please uh, take as much as less time as possible. Yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Sure. I'm, I'm trying to share my screen, ma'am. Uh, uh, still... Uh, you just... Uh, you just Go to the sharing option that is on the center of your screen. Yes, ma'am. It's showing a desktop, ma'am. So I'm clicking on the desktop. Then it's showing your entire screen application yeah, yeah, yeah. window so and Chrome. Show like that only, ma'am. You have to click the PowerPoint option that is at the bottom of your option. First, you have to open your PowerPoint and then only you have to give the, the screen share option from the Teams window. Ma'am, it's showing uh, option your entire screen application window and Chrome tab, ma'am. Yeah, entire yeah, yeah. Screen. You first click on that. You first click on that desktop. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's it's connecting, ma'am. Yes. Now at the bottom you have a PPT open, right? Did you open your PPT already? Ma'am, it's already open, ma'am, in my desktop uh, laptop. 
you just minimize this map you just minimize this and then okay. you show your picture it will be visible to the participants no problem visible is it visible now ma'am yeah 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 it is visible oh. Uh, can i go for this is it visible uh, then visible second. we could see only the empty slide yeah research progress in tree improvement yes you can start please stick to okay. the time ma'am we are running uh, running lack of time kindly make a note of that and oh. then finish oh. the session very fast oh, my improvement and uh, my uh, working okay thank you so as i i'm taking the continuation of uh, anil kumar sir uh, he was talking about the multi locational trial so my work is entirely uh, concentrated on the mlts it is field work so basically we were working on improved varieties of the forestry species we are focus on the first step of selection and then selection targeting the uh, good varieties or which is naturally existing basically and we are excluding these tapping these varieties for uh, tree improvement program so these are the photographs of these uh, uh, candidate trees or we can say that after testing in the progeny trials or Our trials. These would be our elite trees. So, the basically various steps involved in process improvement, which is in basically starts with selection, the planting, the trial in the form of MLTs, and then mass production of these material made to maintain the wider range of our population. Basically, the tree improvement program is a combination of all the methodology which we used in this program. So, basically, what is the highest genetic gain, and if there is a data which is given in the terms of predictive genetic gain in terms of percentage for various applications, we generally follow in tree improvement programs like provenance testing, plus trees, SPAs, clonal orchards, and clonal stock, and the gain is achieved in the condition of clonal is appropriate. So, in that way, we have we I propose of focusing on the clonal multiplication of the superior varieties, and later on I will discuss about steps and the methods which I. followed in my project so this is the basic selection uh, uh, which generally we use for tree improvement programs which starts with selection of the base population the establishment of the gene bank in terms of seedling seed orchards also we uh, established and clonal seed orchards then advanced selections and then establishment of trials and then finally when we got the superior genotype we'll go for hybridization work so and this is what we are saying that if this is the base population and this is our selected population the how much percent of genetic gain we are getting that we have to estimate and another parameter that we were looking for that is a kind of heritability that is broad sense heritability and narrow sense heritability for the trait of interest what is the percent of uh, heritability we are achieving after our selections and testing so if you go further if you further work on the population genetics so these are the various factors that we have to estimate like fst fit fst these are the different parameters that we have to check for in the terms of uh, checking the population genetics of various populatory populations of the forestry species and we have to consider these parameters mutation migration selection genetic drifts what were the major cause of variations within the population and among the population and entirely this work is basically focused on selections based on the modern technology that is our biotechnology aspects okay so genetic testing is a concept where we are going to test the genetic worth of our selected genotypes through mlts and through various genetic parameters the basic procedure for this work is first we have to lay down an experimental trial based following a proper design and technique and then further we have to do the selections so this is the example of one of the provenance trial which is worked under csiro uh, project and where we established a provenance from progeny trials and through enumeration of each and every tree we selected through index method these red color marked 47 trees and that lay down the foundation of my project initially and uh, basically we generally use the designs for this uh, kind of testing is basically in the field program is crd not exactly crd it is randomized block designs and uh, randomized provision we prefer for layouting of the uh, the selected genotypes in different mlts 
then these are field operations. So basically procedures of the entire framework is selection of the location, then replication, proper layout of the design, then nursery procedures, site preparation, then further documentation of the data, then testing of the material, and then further upgradation of the layout or the field trial by the various processes like rubbing and thinning. Then another very important aspect, we have to evaluate what is the breeding value of the genotypes. What is, if it is superior among the laid down material, Years, so what it is breeding value and of course we know that each and every phenotype which we are selecting it is a mainly contributed by genotype and somehow the effect of environment as well and the interaction of the genotype with its environment so to evaluating this genotype into environment impact that we have to focus on the multi-locational testing so that laid down the foundation of the proposed work stability analysis is another factor that we have to find, figure out how stable the genotype in amenities locations so in that way Another aspect, it is clonal forestry aspect. Once we uh, get the superior material after testing, then what is the next step is mass production of that material, making it available in a large number so that we can give this material as much as possible to the farmers for their agroforestry work and so that make it familiar and uh, mass production is very, very required. So it laid down the foundation of my project, which I proposed in the WSB program. In, type, in this training program, uh, many lecturers, they were uh, speakers, they were discussing about the funding. And I'm very fortunate that I got twice this fellowship program before getting into this permanent job, because this program is meant for career break in the science, science for the lady, uh, women candidates. And uh, this project I got twice for the two different, different uh, species. One is for the Sisham on the uh, higher economic returns of the rural farmers who are adopting clonal forestry. And for that, basically, I started my work on the selection of the genotypes. We successfully, we selected more than uh, 100 genotypes and established in the form of jump plasm bank. Then further, we evaluated their coppicing ability, what is their, how vigorous these genotypes, and further, we screened down the material so that we'll get maximum material for mass propagation. Then further observation, we also figure out on the basis of its coppicing behavior, how much number of coppices we are getting and uh, what are those number of clones which are highly vigorous in coppices. Then the average number of uh, coppice produced by the number of genotypes. Then these are the all statistical analysis we initially we did so that we can narrow down to specific number of uh, individual genotypes so that we can further promote them for further analysis work. So this is the concept of uh, clonal propagation where we use electronically regu regulated mist chamber where we will put them for a period of more than 45 days for vegetative propagation of selected genotypes. And then this is how the material is get ready for mass production. And this material then further, further we did some analytical working percentage. What is this? And this is the second parameter we adopted for further screen down the material for our next level work. And we narrowed down to 41 clones out of 100 clones, which are very good in terms of rooting and sprouting possibility. So these are the material which is quite ready for the field trial establishment. So these material, then we, we selected some uh, different geographical zones all through the soil testing and work. And the, at the time of uh, after a period of two to three years, this material is ready for evaluation, further evaluation. And this work we did very nicely in this project. Similarly, the another uh, work we did in the case of eucalyptus, where we have a provenance come progeny trial that is laid down. And this, these are this, this trial is laid down under the CSIRO project previously. So we carried out our work uh, in this manner. So we selected another superior genotypes and we we also uh, uh, cut it down for further study of coppicing ability, same we did in the case of uh, Shisham. And then later on, some anatomical studies also we carried out for what is the intratree inter variation so that we can find out what is the fiber properties of this, uh, because this variety species is very good in pulp traits. So we also conducted the anatomical variation studies. And we also uh, calculated the heritability of different fiber properties of uh, these selected genotypes. And luckily, we uh, narrowed down to 47 good genotypes we found on the basis of this genetic test on the basis of anatomical parameters. Then successfully, we established a jump plans bank of these. And then second stage is another six stages, getting ready the material for, for mass propagation and establishment in the field trials. So again, we did the same procedures, mass propagation of these uh, selected genotypes and through vegetative propagation, nodal cutting inside the uh, regulated condition of misting. 
then further uh, coppicing we done second time coppicing then this material is ready for field establishment some uh, molecular estimation of the selected 47 genotypes as well the field trial establishment we did and uh, we evaluated the growth performance of uh, different uh, genotypes in multi, multi locations uh, right from the beginning after one year two year three years and then later on uh, this is the final stage we we recommend the few varieties of uh, eucalypts after the reviewing of uh, the growth parameters and all so these are the few varieties which i'm going to show you which we uh, recommend later in the uh, in this work and these varieties are these varieties we named it as a sahaj variety which have a good survival percentage and volume is quite good and this has shown no disease incidences and insect pests second variety which we really uh, which we observed is a uh, riju variety we gave the name riju this is also its technical detail and uh, there is a third variety 35 so out of my 47 genotype that we started with the selection screening and different parameters in the work we narrowed down to uh, three important varieties and which we are looking forward further for some more uh, test and testing and dust testing also so that we can able to release this variety for commercial that's it from my side thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you for being with us in a short time and ex, uh, and uh, explaining your all your research works and everything thank you for the uh, wonderful uh, short presentation i now request uh, mr prasad thank you, you can thank click the stop sharing option ma'am and then leave off there is a stop sharing option shivani dubey there is a stop sharing option on your screen With blue highlight, you can click that, and then you can get removed. Yes. Hello, ma'am. Yes, Prasad. Hello. I'm audible. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. But I'm you are now, in the name of Suresh. I, I'm sharing my screen. Yes, yes, you can share. So I now request Mr. Prasad, who is studying. Second year B.Sc. Department of Chemistry, uh, Sadakatulla Appa College, Tirunelveli, Tamil Nadu, and he is here to present his topic on impact of environmental hazards on our environment and controlling process. Um, slide is visible. Right now it is not visible. Will you click the share option in the Teams window? One minute. now yes it is getting shared yes now you click your ppt which is open okay okay uh, okay okay it is visible you can go with the slides yes it is visible prasad you can start your presentation and be crisp uh, be very crisp we have we are running lack of time so please be crisp okay ma'am okay. finish as soon as possible thank you good morning to one and all i am prashad i am studying second bsc chemistry ma'am i am audible yes you are audible Good morning. Uh, good morning to one and all. I am Prashad. Uh, I am studying B second BSc Chemistry. Uh, I am student from Sadakutulla Appa College, Tirunelveli, Tamil Nadu. Today I shall discuss about the topic of uh, uh, environmental impacts of environmental hazards on uh, on our environment and controlling process. This is my mail ID. Pr Prashad zero one at gmail dot com. I shall. Uh, First of all, uh, today's today's our environment today our environment hazard uh, affected by so many hazards. Uh, first of all, I discuss about types of environmental hazards. First, the environmental hazards are classified into mainly in three types. There are primary hazards, secondary hazards, tertiary hazards. First, I discuss about prime. What is primary hazards? And the screen is visible. Hello. Yes, the screen is visible, 
please be go fast okay ma'am okay ma'am first uh, i shall topic uh, talk about primary hazards uh, this is the hazards uh, this gives the direct results on the ground uh, which is including building collapsing roads and bridges are being destroyed and railway rails uh, railway lanes being buckled for example the, uh, this is a mizoram earthquake uh, recently there are, there are so many damages in uh, uh, in the, in in roads and uh, many houses and churches this is a pictures do you see this is a earthquake uh, about 5.3 magnitude hit in aizol uh, in the state of mizoram uh, there are 20 km uh, depth, uh, depth of the earthquake away from this mizoram next i can talk about how to control the earthquake first of all uh, first construct buildings that can withstand the force of an earthquake then uh, we are using the earthquake drills and then to prepare natural earthquakes to reduce this risk from humans and uh, to reduce the mine, mining works from the earth surface this is uh, uh, this is how to control this earthquake then i shall talk about secondary hazards these are the these are the hazards Uh, this gives the result of the primary hazard which including tsunami tropical cyclone fires due to ruptured gas mains etc in recently the the this picture is about why so uh, so many people are affected by this and the next picture is in california then i shall discuss about why so gas leak gas leakage in may 7 uh, in may 7 this is a polymer gas uh, which is leaked out from the lg polymer chemical plant in vaisak uh, this gases are affected around 3 kilometers uh, there are so many uh, there are so many people uh, across 5000 above people are affected by this gas uh, but 11 people are only dead this is uh, this is also then uh, due to this tiring uh, this tiring gas over uh, these, uh, these are compounds uh, which is tiring this gas evaporation people are suffered by headache loss in hearing fatigue and weakness and then this is a human uh, effect, uh, suffering then i will talk about animals in animals there are side effects on the kidney liver eye and nasal irritation by this inhaling gas uh, how can it is possible it is due to the its in temperature from the liquid tank then how how to control this gas leakages to reduce high temperature on industry to control the product stability products are having an equilibrium state to avoid combustion then this is a picture about uh, recently in sydney uh, and uh, amban cyclone which are which is including secondary hazards then i shall start discuss about the tertiary hazards these hazards are long term hazards uh, in our environment that that are in a result of a primary event in an example crop failure volcanic eruption etc these are the pictures in uh, our country which is in lok which is the picture of local uh, locust attack i shall discuss uh, discuss about the locust attack on, uh, on our country in india locust are attacked from pakistan country through uh, through our uh, through our rajasthan to enter uh, to enter in our Uh, part of our country like punjab madhya pradesh and uttar pradesh and south areas this is an ep- epidemic disease this is an epidemic disease uh, the, the these are african type of epidemic uh, it was attack the plants in the acre land to damage the crops uh, there are 50000 hectares of desert areas are killed by this uh, locust attacks hazards do you know A small locust, uh, a small locust swarm can eat as much food in a day as about thirty-five thousand people. Then, how to save crops from these hazards? We can uh, first of all we control these hazards by spray, uh, sprinkle pesticides on plants by aircraft or sprayer or sprayer. Then, crop rotation. What is crop crop rotation? It is the practice of growing. a series of different types of crops in the same area across a sequence of growing region 
uh, what is it doing it reduces reliance on uh, reliance on one set of nutrients uh, pest and and use and uh, weed pressure and the probability of developing resistant pest and weeds and uh, then loosen loosening the soil how to loosen the soil mixing sand into clay soils to loosen soil then uh, irrigation uh, how to uh, then irrigation controlling uh, this is a how how do it the limited water is supplied in the uniform supplied in the uniform distance between the crops then fertilization you are know then weeding process how to how do weeding process in our life in this land uh, it is re removal of weeds in tamil it is uh, it is kala eduthal it have uh, it affects the soil minimally soil minimally plants uh, it developing the plant growth soil life reducing the span of weeds in uh, in chemical process uh, it, it is used as in pesticides uh, weedicides uh, and mechanical methods is digging burning like etc okay i can uh, put the i can try this red uh, i can put this red can you try it hello yes we can see your slides uh do you try this participants when monkey rotate the gear which mark will be hit one or two i will uh, give up the time one minute in one minutes for one minutes i'm just do you try yes. answer is one or two the monkey is rotating the gear which mark will be hit one or two Hello Yes Prasad did you finish Hello? with the presentation Okay I will answer Hello it. Prasad both Okay ma'am okay. the okay. answer is Then another question uh, This is the picture there are two buckets of water in bucket A the temperature of the water is at 25 degree celsius uh, in bucket B the temperature of the water is at 25 degree fahrenheit you can drop a coin in this buckets at the same time which coin touches the bottom first do you answer is hello yes sir it is not possible for everyone to answer please go with the okay, answer i will answer right. i will answer this ah because it is the, due to the 25 degree celsius it is in the liquid form 25 degree fahrenheit is in the it is in the cold form The, the so the coin is frozen in the bucket b bucket a there is a liquid form so uh, the touch, uh, coin touches the bottom first okay thank you one and all and thank you for this opportunities to take this seminar uh, for this organization and uh, faculty members okay thank you thank you thank you sir borkar sir are you there i am ready yes sir sir uh, we have very short time so please stick on uh, just, the time just, I, I, yes sir yes sir i can try to, i can try to finish within 10 minutes don't worry madam thank you so much for understanding sir thank you sir sir you can share your screen if you have yes it, is it visible no right now it is not visible you have to press the share option that is in the center of your screen which might be third third possibility yes i think it is getting open yes now you uh, click the powerpoint yes yes yes, yes, yes. you click the powerpoint sir. it is visible yes yes sir. Get, okay. yes sir yes sir writing research paper we can see okay 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 thank one you second, good good one second sir i'll Sir, one second. I will introduce you to the platform, and then you can start. So, next participant we have Dr. Borakar, V. C. Borakar, Associate Professor, Department of Mathematics and Statistics, uh, from uh, Maharashtra. Today he is here with us to share his uh, topic on writing research paper using LaTeX. Sir, you can start this session. Okay. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, most of the researcher using Word, uh, Paper, uh, Page Maker, and other softwares for 
uh, paper writing and uh, only in word 33% of local researcher using latex engineering people using latex but other uh, researchers will not able to use latex so my aim is only to introduce latex in front of you within uh, 10 minute it is impossible to express whole latex but it is a technical software but uh, in brief i can try to explain uh, so in the research papers we always coming with a uh, title of the paper abstract introduction main text conclusion and bibliography so uh, in making titles we uh, came across the difficulty that what should be the font of the title what should be the font of uh, author what should be the font of abstract what should be the font for the uh, just a class subject classification if there are so many how could not can be added and again we can come across a labeling purpose if we label for in mathematics or in biological sciences if some figures are inserted and if we label the figure 1 2 3 and uh, again if you want to insert the figure above one or in between 2 and 3 again we have to go to each and every pages and then change the uh, figure number and continue this hectic process or same case will be happen in case of the uh, bibliography also when we are putting the citing the references in front of any article in front of any points uh, we can have came up with this same difficulty but this difficulty is solved in case of the latex software so uh, what is it brief in brief uh, the latex software it is a tool and it is a freeware now we uh, nowadays 2.9 latex is a free and it is best version there are so many text editor are there uh, some are some are free and some are paid version the text maker technic center uh, text studio text work these are the free software and as well as uh, kill latex editor preparea overleaf authoria and win edit these are the paid of paid uh, software so latex work into two ends mic tech 2.9 it is the best version which is the back end and the text editor is in the uh, front end in the front end we can write your research paper uh, in the format just it is a like in the form of command just we are using in case of the c programming of your so here it is a difficulty for uh, generating mathematical symbols generating figures Uh, engineering some models are be prepared if we use the chemical software inside the latex that is uh, available we can say that these are the header file for chemical software you can develop the chemical structure also for biological students we can uh, develop the gene structures whatever each and everything will be available in case of the latex so uh, it is a uh, uh, user friendly and uh, even though you can not only your paper you can prepare your thesis also in the form of latex in the uh, what are the benefits using versus word and latex it is high type set quality in tool mathematical formula so for the file formatting is bounded then it can be work in all the systems uh, whatever may be the systems are there linux uh, linux system it is already uh, open there and the other system you have to put it latex is a freeware it is easy to handle it is uh, easy to understand and uh, you can run in the small pc having the less memory also so what are the tools for latex unix based system yes sdvi file ghost view is there fix file is emacs file these are the files generated by the latex and in case of the windows ghost view acrobat distiller acrobat reader scientific bitface these are the generated files in case of the uh, one windows version so what is the in case of introduction it is html files are there and it is highly resolving and the lessai lempot he was the originally generator for the latex he introduced the latex for our teacher research community as well as for our uh, other communities also so this is the overview of the latex files this uh, these files are generated through your screen and uh, this post script file it is useful for us it is dvi file 
and with the help of latex we can make pdf file ps file whatever might may be the file we required we can make so the basic for latex latex we start with the document class options open document and close document these are the two basic commands required in case of the document so in case of the document class we can put the paper size font size two side document landscape document in case of the article class we can write articles that is which is our research paper report which is a project report maybe or book writing so many of the uh, best journals they are preparing latex documents so first of all we can use these packages so we can import these packages for before to start the latex file so begin to start the documents and start type setting quality these are the these symbols used for next line new line and new pages then bold space letter bf is used or you can write this type of symbol latex italic letter you can use italic letter every each and every letter will be possible uh, here in case of the latex so input files so first of all which files we have to require on which work version suppose we are using ams file that is a uh, mathematical journals or other biological american oriented american mathematical society journals we can came across this ams symbolic file ams math file ams font file graphics file graphics packages tixi this tixi software is a very uh, wonderful software with the help of this software we can generate mathematical figure even though engineering block designs we can generate with the help of this tixi software it is the best software then we can add the color by using color packages font package and font can be changed chemical pack packages we can uh, structureize the chemical uh, structures inside your paper enumerate uh, number the papers or whatever may be the required uh, equations figure everywhere hyper linking are there all these fancy uh, commands are using inside the packages how this can be executed use package and uh, inside the bracket we have to put this type of packages which we have to require for your writing the paper so font so this uh, formatting format are again what are the format if you require the sections so section 1 section 2 section 3 sub sections are there so uh, in word or other software we can do this manually but in case of the latex software we can do inside it just write the select section we can put the uh, header for the section sub section we can put the header for sub section automatically generated and this is again best that if you if you have prepared one paper or for example you are preparing the thesis if your first chapter is okay second chapter is okay third chapter is okay again if you want to uh, become that first chapter is second second chapter is good if we only receive the content you can manage all the symbolic and again all the labeling inside it so this is the beauty of this software so table we can insert the table by table generator format tables display tables make tables and all these are there list we can make the list begin list atomize inside the list we can again prepare the list the inside commands we can use latex so so many things are available atomize size say so what is the environment something environment many command just like centralize it left alignment right alignment all these are can be preferred with the help of latex so these are the latex in environments group commands just like told previously uh, again the example so simple the example if you uh, prepare a document that is simple example title how to prepare the title document class article title we can put the title author was first author second author separated by the command then uh, if we required the date you can put the date otherwise no date you can remove the date make title command you can make the command so uh, time is not permitted I, i able to execute each and every command but uh, due to times lack of times uh, i am explaining each and every just in all so next second figure for uh, inserting the figure we can use this type of command is there so uh, 
vegan figure HTML figure is there, figures, width, and all this. So, for example, caption for the figure, natural science of foundation. See, this label figure is added. So, you can uh, label it in FS. Then, if we enumerate in FS any times, the symbols come in front of you. It is not necessary to again retype the symbols or recall the symbols. So, this is next. This is the best beauty of the software. Then bibliography, we can create the bibliography, first author, then title of his presentation paper or articles, books or what you may be, year of publication, publishers and all this. Just like uh, this, this is the counting site. So this is the site, this uh, command uses that if you put site 98, if you put in front of your uh, text, so automatically that number is automatically generated. So this is the best software for writing people uh, PhD thesis, mathematical formula easy, maintaining bibliography, uh, considering PDF files. So it will be best software I think. So with this, uh, within Hari, uh, I am trying to explain this software. So these are the some references. Les I put, he was generator of the software and it is a free source. It is available. Uh, on the this. So with this, uh, CKS, Rangaswamy College of Technology, Kuntur, uh, National Science Foundation, Kuntur, and coordinator, participants, and all the colleagues, and especially all the organizers for organizing such a nice uh, program with, for us. Thank you, on all, one and all. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your timely presentation. Uh, with this, we are ending up this uh, virtual course and uh, uh, you all can be with us in the validity function. And uh, we are in uh, a process of uh, starting our validity, pro validity function very soon. We have all the guests already joined. Uh, so with this, we can join the validity function. We can start the validity function also. And uh, I request the participants, if you have in the meantime, if you are free, you can also fill the feedback form, which is available in the WhatsApp group for the session one uh, that is taken by Dr. P. Ponmurgan. So the validatory function is about to start. And uh, after this program or before this program starts also, you can fill up the form. It is as usual, a simple feedback form for every session. Kindly fill up that also. Thank you, Barakar, sir, for your timely presentation. Thank you. I request all